Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. We have Arish Hassan back in uh, streaming. That is not in the studio, it's about the studio. Of course, it's not in the studio. He's streaming from college and we're sitting here in the studio. And he's got a couple of nice, interesting articles I thought we can talk about. It's like the tale of two brothers, as we find in the Bible. One who, was, who went wayward and the other one who stayed on the path. And we can find out who was rewarded by the Lord Almighty and why it's sometimes prudent to be slow and steady that wins the race. So Shashit, when we jump into the articles and then you can explore the conversation post discussion of the article. Yeah. So, well, more than articles, it's more to do with uh, just the quarterly results which have come out in the US. So you can open up any uh, news website and you can check it for yourself or you can open up the quarterly reports which the companies themselves have put out. The two companies we're going to be looking at today are um, Omaha, Omaha's, uh, you know, uh, magician Warren Buffett. Uh, and Wizard Berkshire of Omaha. Hathaway. Yeah, the Wizard of Omaha. And uh, you have the other one, which is Carl Icahn, who was also treated to be one of those vulnerable characters who, uh, you know, was talked about that way, but not so much recently. Uh, Carl Icahn of Icahn Enterprises, another titan of yes. investing albeit in a different way of investing, which uh, he engages. So let's talk about Carl Icahn and Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's quarterly results, uh, and when I talk about Warren Buffett, of course, I'm talking about Berkshire Hathaway, his uh, conglomerate company, which he's the chairman of, and uh, you have Charlie Munger also on the board. So both of these people have been investing in multiple companies below its intrinsic value. And they've uh, been exceptional at this. They've showed wonderful CAGR over the past few decades since the 80s. So the quarterly results have been spectacular. They have been able to show $36 billion in terms of just uh, profits or net income just in this quarter. So that's th $36 billion. And if you subtract maybe $10, $15 billion in terms of uh, capital requirements, you have about $20 billion or so in just free cash flow. So this company, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, that is, has just been minting a lot of money. And uh, what Berkshire Hathaway does is with this free cash flow, they plug it back into the system. They don't pay out dividends. They've never considered paying out dividends. Uh, they bought $1 billion worth of um, stock back, buyback. They bought Berkshire Hathaway back. And this is, a good, this is good news for those of us who are holding Berkshire Hathaway. And I hope the people at home have accumulated at least a few Berkshire Hathaway class B stocks, which is the cheaper version of the uh, Berkshire stocks. I'm hoping that we have some people in uh, who, are, who watch us who have some Berkshire Hathaway stocks uh, in their portfolio. So this is good for us because the buyback, what it does is that it reduces the amount of the pie which is there, which in the sense it's that uh, more of, we get more of the pie. That is, there are less amount of people who are there to eat a share of the pie. So you're basically saying if 10 people have a share to the pie, eight of you sit together and say, okay, let's buy two people out so that uh, all eight of us can share the pie. And that's what Warren Buffett has been doing. And Warren Buffett has been buying back stock. He's been reducing the amount of outstanding stock. And uh, one of the things which Warren Buffett keeps saying is that he keeps uh, bemoaning why he went public why he let go of Berkshire stock. He keeps saying that it's one of his biggest mistakes in his life. He he says that he should have completely weighed in on Berkshire. He should have never went public. So he's constantly buying back stock and he believes Berkshire is undervalued right now. And uh, their profits have been great. The company is doing wonderful. And this mainly comes from an appreciation in the stock market. The S&P 500 over the past year has is up 17% mainly because of AI stocks and before that because of low interest rates. So S&P Finder is doing wonderfully. And Berkshire Hathaway itself is up, up by around 10% in the past year. So that's good for uh, Mr. Warren Buffett. And he's made some record profits this quarter. The second person uh, I want to talk about in this video is Carl Icahn of Icahn Enterprises, the activist investor. And also, someone in the comments thought that was tea. Actually, my uncle is drinking coffee. So just so that uh, the people in the comments realize. Well, but regardless of, well, I, I guess the story of Warren Buffett and Carl Icahn is little like the fight between coffee and tea. The only thing <laughs> with Carl Icahn is that Carl Icahn ended up putting some salt in his tea, which is kind of sad. But uh, 
Carl Icahn has uh, had an exceptional strategy. Actually, he's one an outperformer. His activist investing was basically taking companies which came up in a lot of froth. That is low interest rates, and these companies just built up without any internal structure. There was there was it's like diamonds in the rough. And Carl Icahn exceptionally. what he did was he uh, took over these companies and he pushed the executives to get off their um, behinds and uh, you know push for corporate restructuring in the company and bring about some more ordering in a company to unlock some of its inner assets that's basically what carl icahn did and he did it wonderfully well and yes, he made a lot of true. returns over the past few years past few decades even he was uh, exceptional at what he was doing just as exceptional as warren buffett is at uh, purchasing stocks below intrinsic value and warren Very buffett true. has notoriously said that he's never going to touch management in any company he buys he buys companies Correct. with good management whereas carl icahn says okay you bring in the bad management and i'll make it good management Correct. and uh, yeah. carl, that's how carl icahn makes his money right later but yeah and uh, what's lately happened is that carl icahn went against his own word carl icahn uh, has previously said that you should never bet against the market betting against the market pretty much opens you up to a ton of losses but what Correct. what's ended up happening is carl icahn tried to short the s&p 500 tried to short the nasdaq he basically uh, tried to short the market the us market and uh, he got paid in kind by uh, the market rallying 17% which has been great for warren buffett the coffee lover and uh, terrible for a man who drinks tea Uh, with salt in his tea, so Carl Icahn really made a killing during the zero interest rate environment because you had all these companies with poor management, with uh, assets which needed value to be unlocked, and he was doing this. But uh, if you actually look at his performance, he made about six billion dollars in just his activist uh, activist side, but then he lost, I think, around nine billion dollars in uh, betting against the market. So it's been quite a conundrum which uh, Carl Icahn has been. and it's a fall from grace because he's actually an exceptional investor and uh, it's quite sad that we have to see mr icahn in the state he is in currently yeah it reminds me of a saying my sister always tells me every saint has a past every sinner has a future well the sun hasn't set on carl icahn as yet so i won't yes. write him off but no, he has made quite a number of uh, let's say snafus he could have yeah. taken better judgment and better decision i would say it's more to do with hubris sometimes when you when you're batting well you know you in the crease you hitting the ball you seeing the ball big as a football you know you get that odd bowler who comes in like okay he tempts you he gives you a couple of fours a couple of sixes and he makes you feel really good and the crowd is behind you fielders look all really sad then he slowly don't notice one fielder swing from mid off to this side or that side and suddenly it comes nice low full toss and you're like okay let's go at it and suddenly you cut it right to the guys <laughs> and then you like swing the bat like damn it damn it and the whole crowd is like go oh. yeah <laughs> that's been car like in the last few days i would say but it's not i would i wouldn't say something terrible i mean yeah it's more he, it's, he quickly corrected course corrected yeah yeah he did he did which is great on him i mean most people find it very hard to course correct most people you know Find a way out to put their put up their hand and say, "Okay, you know, I did a boo boo, you know, yeah. I'm sorry." But credit to him, you know, he he course corrected, he came out, and he did what was right. But it is hard, and 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 the you know the sad part, the reason why we're bringing up Kala Icahn is because um, he recently in his quarterly report announced that he's going to be cutting his dividend payout, yeah. which makes sense because he's been making a loss. So it's even a, a surprise that he's paying out dividend in the first place. So When I read the news, I was shocked. I was wondering how the hell is this? Oh, but he's under immense pressure from the investors. So correct, correct. There's a lot so, of pressure on him. Yeah, so that's, that's the problem. Why he's... This is the main reason why Warren wants to buy out Berkshire Hathaway and extinguish all of it, and you know, make it make it a privately held company for the simple reason that he doesn't have to answer. You know, he's not yeah. morally obligated because Warren, different from Mike, and he feels what very morally obligated. If somebody is given hundred rupees to Warren, you know. They told him take care of it for me and make it grow for me. He takes it like a personal responsibility to do it. And each and every investor of Berkshire Hathaway is like that to him. You know, doesn't want to let them down. Yeah, he feels personally invested in each and every investor of the company. So when you have that kind of a mindset, it's very hard on you to just take a risk or take a bet or a gamble. 
This is one of the main reasons he says, I'd rather keep the cash and wait. Wait for an yes. opportune moment. He will not gamble it. Yes. Icon is another sort. Icon's like, hey, you know who I am. You know how crazy my bets are. But if it pays off, you want to be rich. If yeah. it doesn't pay off, well, we try. Well, that's true. He did have a, a case for why he was bearish. And on this channel too, we've been quite bearish in the past when uh, interest rates were quite low. We saw this coming. We said that there's going to be interest rate hikes. The only thing for Icon is that it didn't come soon enough. It it only hey, started about... Famous in- saying. You know the famous saying Mama keeps saying. You know, yeah. the markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Remain solvent. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so that's that's exactly what happened with Icon. And uh, he has come out and he has said that, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I made a mistake. Although he does, he's swearing at Hindenburg saying that if you guys didn't say something, then this wouldn't have been such a bad thing. But he, his bet was still, uh, he was still on the wrong side of the bet. So it's quite sad. But um, speaking of which, uh, Warren Buffett's uh, Berkshire Hathaway has recently has been selling uh, more stock than it has been buying. So they've mm-hmm. been selling uh, their portfolio uh, holdings of Apple. They sold about $8 billion more than what they bought in terms of stock. So he's been slowly offloading uh, companies like Apple for buying more Berkshire Hathaway. And the thing is, by buying more Berkshire Hathaway, he's also buying more Apple. He's also buying more Coca-Cola. He's also buying more Geico. Because all these companies are companies which Berkshire Hathaway has taken. And if Berkshire Hathaway happens to be cheap, cheaply uh, more cheaply valued than let's say apple then you're better off buying berkshire hathaway than buying apple uh, in and of itself and recently apple has posted wonderful returns in terms of its uh, quarterly profits and uh, maybe it makes sense as to why warren buffett is selling off the main stock and he's buying uh, berkshire hathaway instead so no I, if you if you really do the maths behind it and i'm sure it'll be a beautiful math presentation to see if you compare the, you know, do a graph comparison of Apple's value and current share yeah. price and Berkshire Hathaway's current value and price and do the math behind selling it and buying it and seeing how the ratio, you know, of ownership, because the pie of Berkshire Hathaway is getting smaller, the amount of Apple stock as a single investor you have, the pie share yeah. is growing. Though the actual Correct. share numbers of Apple is shrinking, shrinking but your yeah. access to that number of shares Individually, you all know, yeah, that is increasing. So if you see right. the dynamics of that equation, you'll be like, wow, you know, it's a very smart move by Warren. You know, yeah. what, most people don't pick on it. You know, they don't see this. They're like, ha, oh, there must be some reason. He's and, in some and, trouble. And, he needs a guy. <laughs> and, and this is a 93-year-old man who's making, yeah. you know, ex- exceptional plays, exceptional plays, which you wouldn't. It's like watching Sachin play at his prime when he's like 80 years old with a walking stick, drinking Diet yeah. Coke, eating C's candy, uh, laughing yeah. about random things and like playing at his best. So it's crazy yeah. watching someone like Warren Buffett in action. And I think we should all count ourselves very lucky that we've seen Carl Icahn in action and we've seen Mr. Buffett in action. And uh, we're still seeing them in action. So and uh, it's it's going to be quite fun to see what Warren Buffett makes of the high interest rate environment, which has come back after a long time. Very, very true. And he's one of those few people who has a deep perception into a world yeah. of high interest rate. You know, yes. so his college days and all that. So he knows. And he knows Ben Graham, how Ben Graham lost all his money in the Great Depression. And what mm-hmm. his, you know, his guru went through. And what all he must have told him. When the high interest rates came, what all happened? So all those old memories must be playing back in Warren's head. Must be taking those records out and putting it back and saying, hmm. leaning back, looking at the newspaper and the thing going, hmm. <laughs> With Charlie on the other side telling him other things too, I'm sure. Some interesting conversations would be going on in that one. Yeah, and the, the stock, the cash pile has increased even more. Uh, so it looks like both Warren Buffett and Carl Icahn are thinking along the same lines, but they went in completely different directions. Whereas like you say, cash is king and Warren Buffett has basically worked on stockpiling $136 billion in cash. Whereas, uh, you know, Carl Icahn tried to go big or go home by shorting the market and it going south. No, but as even Icahn is right in a strange way. It's just that he's unfortunately not in a position to hold his positions longer. Correct. It's just Correct. that Nassim Taleb famously said that. 
you know, when he was shorting the market, he was shorting and shorting. Everybody kept telling him he's crazy, he's crazy, he's wrong, he's wrong. He says he kept doubting himself, but he knew he was right. But just because everyone telling him you're stupid, you're stupid, and you're wrong, you're wrong, he had to hold on to his positions. And finally, when the market corrected and he cracked and it opened for him, you know, he became like, whoa, he became a god over him. People were like, whoa, Nassim Taleb, like amazing. Look at the guy. Yeah. You know, the same thing if I can could hold on to this play because eventually, 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 everything cracks. You know, nothing yeah. lasts, no party lasts forever. Finally, the punch hole does end and things will take yeah. a sour note and things will flip over. Mm -hmm. But And one of, of, one of the, uh, like you said, everything cracks and the cracks are showing in the sense that one of the biggest uh, uh, truck uh, transportation companies, Yellow, in the US has gone filed for bankruptcy. And this was one of the companies which during COVID itself was teetering on the edge. And uh, Donald Trump had basically used his connections and, I mean, his friends used his connections and they got a $700 million bailout, which uh, brought Yellow, at, um, it was a 100-year company, and uh, the company has just gone kaput, and 30,000 jobs have just vanished in thin air, just like that. So I, I wonder how long we can still see the uh, gains which we were seeing for the past decade go on for. That's a problem, because the problem is uh, we have been giving so much of free cash into the economy. And the dollar being pumped in so much through quantitative easing, it's very hard to see because they themselves don't know how much they've printed. And they can't even, like we discussed so many, you know, trickle down, trickle up, everything put together. We do not know where stocks of cash are just sitting unlocked, you know, when it's moving up and down the pyramid. And each one has to be pulled in and extinguished. And some of these lumps can be sitting there for a long time before you can pull it out and extinguish it. And those can only be pulled out and extinguished through various forms of levers of policies through the government. It's not yeah. even the Fed can pull this money out and extinguish it. Though Fed was the one who bumped all this money in. You know, you can't pull it back out and turn it off now. So it's a mess. And how long will it last? No idea. That's why even Fed is trying to keep a strong position. Every time Paul keeps saying, I'm not going to reduce the rate. Like, read my lips. It is not going down. It is not even going to stay here. I'm going to keep going up. Up and away. Yeah. But people are like, no, he can't do this. Sure. He's just saying it, but he means something else. I can see it in his eyes. He's saying this, but he means that. That's how the market is talking even now. So yeah. it's crazy the way it's going. But hey, it's nice to sit and watch. And we are sitting with small trinkets of money when we are investing. So there are still a lot of good plays to be made. There are a lot of good companies still going at great value, which you can still buy. Which after this. Uh, I'd Talked about I'd quite, suggest, quite a lot. And I'd suggest that people look into short term T bills in the US because you're yeah. getting about five point something percent in uh, terms of just a year. And that's really good in terms of the dollar and uh, accounting for depreciation. You're, go you're going to make a wonderful return. That's great now. advice you're giving because a lot, of, a lot of people have been following on Instagram and privately messaging me, uh, sitting in US and Canada, asking this exact same question what Shasta just answered. We got some small pile of cash. What should we do with it? The market looks like this. Should we put it in the market? Should we not put it in the market? And what Shashup just said is fantastic advice. Put it in the tables and sit and watch where we're going because you might as well keep your cash working for you and tables are very safe. Even if you are planning to come back to India eventually, it's a very safe thing to sit inside. Yes. Anything else you want to add, Shashup? No, that's pretty much it. With interest rates going up, you should definitely see a nice depreciation value effect, which you'll see. And it's a nice arbitrage to be made. And maybe we'll take it up and discuss it in detail in one one of the videos coming forward. Correct. And I have a lot of questions that have been asked by guys sitting in the US, which I have, which I'll share with you from Instagram. They've been asking me. Sure, and I sure, think yeah. maybe you can sit and answer, you can give your advice and answer those, what your viewpoints yeah. are on those situations. And maybe you can do a video about that too. Sure. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us today on Be Rich. Uh, it's been wonderful to have Shashwat back here with us. And do subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification as always. So you'll be notified every time Shashwat Taranan or if me come out with something new for you guys. I hope you've been enjoying the content. We're trying to keep it fresh and interesting for you guys as always. Please do put us in the comments down how we can improve it for you. What specific topics you'd like us to discuss. What specific conversations would be of interest to you. Once again, thank you for joining us on Be Rich. Thank you. On 26th August, 
we are doing an event in Bangalore Whitefield. Those desirous of meeting me in that event can contact the WhatsApp number or the email given below. My team will give you the details. Thank you once again for supporting Be Rich. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.